Here's the way the prize wheel works. We got one more. It's really kind of doesn't really sit straight anymore. Why is that? I guess it's because the, the wood really did warp. Uh, the big prize box has 24 slots. There's 24 points on the wheel for this to land on. The trading card thing only has 20 slots. It's a slightly smaller box. So, 1 to, tw one to 20 obviously corresponds to the things. If it lands on 21, 22, or 24, we just spin it again. And if it lands over here on 23, because that's the... Because that's the special number, that's my pick. Feel free to guess along again. You don't win anything yet. I'm sorry. I, I wish I could do more for you as a, as, a, as, a, as a quality entertainment streamer on Twitch. But, hey, it doesn't matter. Let's... Oh. Okay. Just, I'm not even going to look at that. That was fucking embarrassing. Don't clip that. All right. That's... Yeah, that's good. That sounds good. 14! <laughs> what I have here is a package of trading cards from a very specific point in uh, not just American history, but like... Uh, television history. This is a pack of 10 cards of Beavis and Butthead from 1994. I watched this show all the time when I was a kid. My parents hated it. I watched it when I hung out like with my uncle who was young and hip. We would watch it together. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, <laughs> it was just a cool show. I just, I just really liked it. Um, one thing I did notice though when, when, when I got this when I when I picked it up, uh, they're wearing different clothes. Uh, the the way it worked is that Butthead used to wear a shirt that said ACDC. Beavis wore a shirt that said Metallica. Of course, that was their look. But for merchandising, they had to change their clothing. I guess because they couldn't get permission to use the band names. So instead, we have Skull and Death Rock. It says 1994. They tries to say inaugural edition, but because they're idiots who are slackers. And stoners or whatever. Not, uh, I guess Beavis and Butthead aren't necessarily stoners because you never see them actually use drugs, but they seem like the kinds of dudes who would do that. But uh, they don't know how to spell it, so they just put first edition. So yeah. I don't know if they were uh, subsequent editions. Uh, I just I <laughs> don't know. I will say that Mike Judge, the guy who created this and wrote this and voiced both Beavis and Butthead, is a fucking phenomenal writer. You might know his work. Uh, if you don't know who he is, you might know his other work, King of the Hill. Uh, that was him. I believe he... Um, I don't know if he was involved... I think he he was a writer for Parks and Rec. I'm kind of certain on that. He also did uh, the movie Idiocracy, which we are, which has actually turned out to be a documentary. Are they Chads? I don't know. I mean... They're somewhere in the middle. Because they keep getting beaten up by the Chads. What was his, what was his name? Was it Troy? Trey? Because they would hang out in front of the gas station. And then there was the guy who drove the, the muscle car that would always beat him up. What was his fucking name? I do have the little piece of paper that tells me where I got these. I want to thank Nars and Varka. For this pack of cards, I appreciate that. Um, on the back, <laughs> it says <laughs> because people had to be told this back then. I mean, probably still. Maybe this is. Let's be honest here. It's probably even worse today. Um, Beavis and Butthead are not role models. They're not even human. They're cartoons. Some of the things they do would cause a real person to get hurt, expelled, arrested, and possibly deported. To put it another way, don't try this at home. I think. Word for word, this is verbatim the disclaimer from the cartoon because they used to have a little banjo playing in the background and Mike Judge would read off the boilerplate that MTV made him put before the show. Let's see, okay. Oh man, these cards are... <laughs> they are... They're the glossy kind and they are stuck together after... Oh, 1994, after 24 years of being stuck in a package and then compressed, they're uh, not happy about that, but... <laughs> So here's the first card. Like I mean, I, I mean it. Like I can, I can hold it from the top card, and they're not gonna separate. So hopefully they don't rip when I try to pull them apart. That would really suck. Now I believe I'm not familiar. I'm pretty sure I've seen every episode of the show except for uh, the, uh, the the re the the reboot they did a couple years ago. They did one season of a, a more modern take on Beavis and Butthead with the same art style, but it's just Beavis and Butthead being Beavis and Butthead in today's society. Um, but I've seen pretty much all the old ones. 
And I think the whole the whole thing about home improvement is that they had a uh, Beavis and Butthead either had a neighbor or a guy that lived down the street from him. And his name was Mr. Anderson. And it was uh, Mike Judge doing his King of the Hill voice, doing Hank Hill. And it became the character became Hank Hill actually. So this was the precursor. And he would always he would always get Beavis and Butthead to do things for him, like mow his lawn or in this case paint his house. And they fuck it up every time. So uh, <laughs> you can see him here. Yeah, Beavis is painting the windows, and he's he's painting the fucking blue on the windows. There are three things you need when you're like painting somebody's. Oh, it's it's done on their voice. Uh, of course, you need some paint. Ass ass wipe. Oh, damn, they were printing that on cards back then. Plus brushes and stuff, which you can just pour the paint on and make Ander <laughs> make Anderson buy more. And you need like a ventricle to get the hell out of there. <laughs> I guess that's the Rugrat school of writing where they get the words wrong on purpose. Anderson loaned us his writing mower. He must have known we were going to do a really good job. <laughs> and then let's go mow Stuart's living room. Stuart was this kid that lived down the street from Beavis and Butthead. And Stuart always thought these two dudes were cool and tried to hang out with them. And oh, what was the... Oh, man. What was the... Shit. Stuart, the little stupid little nerdy kid he also wore a band shirt and i don't remember what it was hopefully we get a card of him so i can figure it out. i'm gonna be thinking about that all night it's gonna piss me off winger that's what it was <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah not markedly not as cool as acdc and uh uh metallica is so okay home improvement let's see next card is uh peace and love suck and this is beavis and butthead being hippies their teacher there, was this t was their teacher Mr. Van Buren? Okay, I don't know. I I'm it's been a long time. Anyways, let's let's take a look. All right. The '60s happened in like 20 years. Oh my God. What? When this card was printed, the '60s happened like 30 years ago, but. <laughs> Reading the back of this card in 2018 really funny. It kind of makes the reality, the gravity of the passage of time sink in. Plus Van 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 Dreesen, Van Dreesen, that's their teacher. Van Dreesen says everyone got involved. That must have really sucked. <laughs> that's yeah. Abe Abe Lincoln is is Abe Abe linked in. He's he is on point with his Beavis and Butthead. Uh, with his Beavis and Butthead knowledge, man. He knows his Van, Van Dreysen. I said Van Buren. I'm getting all this wrong. <laughs> here we go. Ah, uh, here's here's Mr. Anderson. Tom Anderson is his name. He doesn't really look too, too much like Hank Hill, but he talks like him. It kind of has the same mannerisms and the same uh, social affiliations and, and, and stuff like that. So here's here he is. I don't know the context of him holding this purse, but... It's just not, it's not focusing, it's way too, there we go, it's way too bright, there we go. There, 95, 69, what the fuck does that, what? Hang on, are the numbers for these cards just, okay, the, this, okay, Home Improvement is 1869, the 60s one is, is 6, <laughs> 62, 69. Do they all in, okay, I think I see the naming pattern here. Wait, no, this one's 69, 49, god damn it! I was gonna say, I thought the joke was that all the numbers are, the first two is the actual card, and then they all end in 69 because Beavis and Butthead. But this one, this one betrays the naming convention, so maybe they're just supposed to be random numbers because the joke is that they can't count. I have no fucking idea. Oh! <laughs> you can't do this today. Uh-uh. Here it is. Oh, Daria was a character in... Wait. Did Mike Judge write Daria, or was this just a, like a crossover thing that they did? Because now I remember Daria being... Because they would say diarrhea, cha cha cha, whenever she would appear. I remember that now. All right, what's <laughs> the cashier at the fucking store? <laughs> he doesn't have a. Does, I guess does he have a name or is it just cashier? Hang on, let's just. <laughs> you really get an appreciation of of Mike Judge's style of of drawing because this is like this really kind of encapsulates that ugly with the purpose vibe that the that a lot of '90s cartoons had, especially early '90s. Beavis and Butthead encompasses it very well. Rugrats, on the other hand, and everything that Class B Chupo did, which a couple weeks ago we had Ah Real Monsters cards, you can compare those against, they fucked it up. All their stuff was ugly, but it was not ugly in a good way. This is 
very unattractive and off-putting, but it's still fucking hilarious. Here's a, here's a question. Here's a question from... This is posed from Beavis. <laughs> Let's see. I'll, I'll, ask you, I'll ask you guys this question. Whose picture is on a $1 bill? You give up? <laughs> that one dude who's on TV every year for the mattress sale with, like, the other dude with the tall hat? Which is uh, supposed to be... Abraham Lincoln, not to be confused with Gatorbox chat member Abe LinkedIn. So, next one, Todd. That was, I'm so glad we got a card of this guy. This is the dude. This is the this is the Chad that, you, that I was talking about a second ago. The the Chad. His name is Todd, and they they always say Todd is cool, and he always beats him up and shit. So, there we go. Oh no, these are Yakuza tattoos, and they're in their underwear. That's another fucking racial joke. <laughs> it's like the second one in this pack. You really, I mean, you probably couldn't get away with this shit these days. Let's see, tattoos rule, which, I mean, that's the second tattoo card that we've got. In Japan, you can get these tattoos that cover your body and stuff. You can get, like, pictures of dragons and stuff, and, like, those warrior dudes. Uh, those Sam on Rai warriors. Me and Beavis are, like, going to Japan. You have to take a bus, though. Beavis says he was already there one time, so he remembers the way. <laughs> and the final card of the set is our offices, which is the, the shitters in the, the bathroom. This is probably one of the best packs we've opened on this, this, this stream. I really, uh, I really appreciate this. Obviously, Daria is one of the good ones. So is so is Todd. So is Mr. Anderson. The shark tattoo is is cool, but in the context of the other ones that we've got, not as much. <laughs> I really like the cashier. I realize I like all the individual character cards because it just it really kind of showcases just the the variety and scope of characters that Mike Judge created for his show. I think these cards came from a collector's store in Phoenix, Arizona. I want to say it's called Collector's Planet, but I'm not sure. Anyways, these cards were these cards were provided to me from some friends of mine. Uh, gave them shout-outs earlier, Nars and Varka. Thank you for the heads-up on these cards. I really appreciate that. You guys are... Uh, <laughs> you guys picked a good one for me, I, I, and I, I am very grateful for that. Like I swear to God, it's, it's an uphill battle. You can see, I'll show you how the sausage is made. I've tried to tape the batteries back into the thing. <laughs> it just doesn't quite work. All right. So, it's time for the prize matic Let me go like that real quick. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I kind of saw that coming. <laughs> All right. It is number... That's five. It's, it's right on the edge between five and ten. So, uh, let's put the... Put the prize, the little spinny prize away. What is number four? I don't know. Wow, where did these come from? I have no idea. But <laughs> what we've got, what we've got are Easter cards, premiere edition from the, the these are the the first ever Easter. They made trading cards to uh, commemorate, and you can kind of see through the window of the the packaging. It's this is clearly Humpty Dumpty, but it's like the art the art was designed after the packaging was i'm not sure but someone put the cart before the horse because you can't see he's not really in in the frame here but the <laughs> there there you go this says right here it's a, it's a are we going to focus on that a complete seven card story we got to get story time on gator box again what um yeah this says right here 19, 1995, I don't, this is not going to focus, 1995 by uh, Unicorn Publishing? I, that company name, I swear, that sounds familiar. Collect all six limited edition Golden Memories cards. Approximately one in six packs contain a foil stamped Golden Memories card. <laughs> no guaranteed number of limited edition cards per box. I never saw these in stores. I don't know where the fuck... I mean, these are 23 years old. I don't know where the hell you would get these. I would imagine they were put in probably religious stores for, you know, for parents when you get your kids like a little Easter basket on Easter morning. You put little candies and chocolates inside there. You know, you can get all little little trinkets and little toys, and this would be like one of the things you just put inside the whatever. Let's, let's take a look. 
I mean, it's clearly it's a, it's a story, so it's going to be the story of Humpty Dumpty. It's what we saw on the, the cover, so it's it's a complete. Yep, it's that's Humpty Dumpty, all right. And there's inexplicably there's like a crease in the, in the middle of the card. I guess they got damaged somehow, but that is a that is quite a that is a horrifying picture right there. I, I don't like that at all. You don't don't give an egg that human of a face. That's that's scary. I don't mm -mm, I don't. I don't like that. This is not... This is not Humpty Dumpty. Is it Humpty Dumpty? Yeah, well, it's got the same... I don't know. I just don't remember a well-dressed Victorian-era woman on Humpty Dumpty. But let's just... Let's, uh... <laughs> let's... Let's read the back to see with this Twitter user without an avatar. Let's see how this... Let's see how this pans out. Don't give me, don't, just, I know that joke is already not working anymore. Don't tell me that they fucking changed the, the fucking Twitter default avatar from an egg. I know they, I know they did. When I joined Twitter, they didn't even use a goddamn egg as an avatar. They used a little OO face. And it's not the OO face from the furry fandom that you're thinking of. So what's on the back? Holy shit, is this the gold? Did we get a gold? Gold taint. Holy shit. One in six packs contains a foil stamped... Golden Memories card. Did we get we get a rare Humpty Dumpty? Oh shit! Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty together again. Why would a horse try to put an egg together? Horse, you got hooves. You can't you can't fucking put an, you can't do that. There's why did the man? I guess the man rode there on a horse and the horses just kind of stood around. You know, don't don't shame the horses for not being able to put a goddamn egg back together. They don't even got. Not not only do they not have thumbs, they don't have fingers. Period. So you can't blame the fucking horses. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm thinking like pff, this is not the same story, unless there's more to the Humpty Dumpty mythos than I was aware of. But I think I think they just you know took some star power and they applied him to other ones. So, Mary Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow, with silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row? I mean, it is, I will say, do we get, it is nice artwork. It looks like, uh, it, it, technic, it, on, just the art in terms of technical merit, is. it's very pleasant to look at. <laughs> well, it looks like, I mean, let's see if we can guess what Nursery Rhyme this is. It's, uh, Daemonic Void plays the violin. But actually, it's, uh, Hey Diddle Diddle, the cat with the fiddle. We got the cow jumping over, I guess, the sun here. He's supposed to jump over the moon. And, the, you know, the... How does, it, how does it go? Hey, diddle diddle. The cat with the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The puppy laughed to see such a sight. The, the dish ran away with the spoon. That's, uh... Let's... I was close. The, the, cow, the, the, the little dog laughed to see such sport. I, I guess you know different translations. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe this is the King James version of the Cat and the Fiddle, and I was getting the fucking, I don't know, fucking Church of Latter Day Saints version. I don't, whatever. <laughs> Someone touch my spaghetti, Georgie, Georgie Porgy pudding pie or whatever it was. Kissed the girls and made them cry or die. I'm not sure. But this is this man is making a he's making a cake or a pie or some type of pastry and there's some children so I don't you know oh it's pat a cake <laughs> now we've got uh, oh the queen the, the the queen of hearts and her royal tarts or whatever it was was it heart was it hearts or was it farts <laughs> what, do we, what do we got here the tarts the queen of hearts she made some tarts all on a summer's day the knave of hearts. He stole the tarts and took them clean away. <laughs> this is... <laughs> this, see, these are really dumb, but for some reason, for some fucking reason, I feel like these are just up there as some of the greatest things that we found out that the, that the prize wheel has given us. Oh, this is Baba Black Sheep. I recognize this. I mean, let's, let's take a look at Baba Black Sheep, yeah. Baba Black Sheep, have you any wool? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. One for my master, one for my dame, but none for the little boy who cries in the lane. Well, that's not... But you got... But you got three bags. That only accounts for two of the bags. Well, there's one more bag left. You're just gonna... Is that, is that, is that, is that you're gonna hold on to that one for a rainy day? You're gonna invest in that bag of wool? So you get two bags of wool by the next season? Is that how it goes? <laughs> I, I don't know if I can guess this one from looking at the art. Looks, uh... We've got... Bread? I think? And then there's like a little boy down here. Maybe it's a girl? Might be a boy. It's singing. And there's like a little baby who's like kind of tripping out. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, little Tom Tucker. I would not have guessed this one. Little Tom Tucker sings for his supper. What shall he eat? White bread and butter. How shall... Oh, and I'm reading it wrong. How shall he cut it without air a knife? It's been a while since I've seen that. How will he be married? <laughs> Without arrow wife? Well, Tom Tucker is this motherfucker. He is the... Ladies and gentlemen, the original. The original incel. Little Tom Tucker. Never got to fuck her. Ne Complete seven card story. It's not like... It's not a, a complete story. Each one is its own little nursery rhyme. So it's not like... There's no story. I... Maybe, no, because Humpty Dumpty is really kind of a self-explanatory thing. We, we've got the whole story of Humpty Dumpty right here on this one card. I don't think there is a happy ending to it. So, uh, let's, I don't know, let's, 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 pan, let's fan them out. Let's take a look at some of these. Let's take a look at these cards. They have a lot of charm that most of the stuff that we open up on this show doesn't have. Like, just to, just to put, uh... Just as a reminder, I've, I've been saving my favorite cards because I've been trying to make a display with them. Here's here's some of the stuff that passes for, like, my favorite cards, among other things. There's some Howard the Duck shit down here. Some Beavis and Butthead stuff. You know, we've got this, this fucking horse making a face. Elvis. <laughs> we've, got the, we've got the Vor Snake from Aladdin. We've got a counterfeit Bird Ninja Digimon card that Fandramon gave me. You know, we <laughs> got Bigfoot the monster truck. I don't like. They're they're very, they're they're non-threatening is a very weird term to use, but they don't evoke any type of emotional response along from just complacency. Like it's it, it, the the artwork is very placid, and I I kind of I kind of like that. They're just there's not much to them. It's just nice art. I mean, except for Humpty Dumpty, he's fucking scary. I don't like him. But we got, uh... <laughs> I, do, I do want to remind you all that the Humpty Dumpty card is the rare one. We got the chase card! If I had to pick ones that I liked, um... I, you know, I gotta go with Hey Diddle Diddle, just because... The way that these animals are drawn, they're, they're very... You know, pleasant looking. They're not ferocious. They're not uber ultra realistic they kind of just they just look like nice little watercolor paintings of cute animals i appreciate that and i would probably while i'm not trying to imply that i don't like the other six cards i don't like them as much as i like this one so this is this is going to be the one that i pick out of uh out of uh the set i might put this one in the the little display. I'll put it in backwards so that we can show off the little uh, gold, the gold seal of approval. Can we get it? Let's, let's actually get a better. It is a. It's not gonna. <laughs> when it's not focused, it kind of just looks like the Donald Trump coin from last week. But it is. It's a golden version of this expression, which is shrunk down and put down into the corner on all the other cards, but <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so this is the one I like. I, these are really cool. I don't think I... That might be the only package of those I have. I'm, uh... I don't see any just from looking at the prize box, and uh, I don't... I mean, th this has this has a pretty unique packaging like when you look at it from the side like how I've stored all of my trading cards you can see the colored spots I don't think I've got any more of these um, 
But if I do, I'm going to put an, another one back in that box because I would like to open more of these someday. So, so we're going we're uh, to spin for trading cards real quick. So I'm going to get out the prismatic. I'm going to set this down right here. I could probably got to move the drink. And no matter what, we're gonna get we're gonna get dinosaur cards because to go with it, I have three packs of cards from 1993. I've got let me move this real quick. I've got Jurassic Park cards from the original movie. From 2001, I've got Jurassic Park three cards from you know that movie, and then from 1988, which we've seen on this show before. I've got Dinosaurs Attack, which is just not Jurassic Park related. It's just dinosaurs just killing humans. And these are some of the most awesomest fucking cards that we've ever seen on this show. So the way it's going to work is really simple. Uh, we're going we're gonna to spin the wheel, which I fixed it, by the way. It's not going... Uh, well, hang on. Yeah, okay. It kind of... I fixed it so it doesn't scrape all over the place and make that awful sound. What we're going to do is, like, you know, we got numbers 1 all the way through 24... We got three different packs of cards. If we land on a number, like, let's say six. Six is fully divisible by three with the remainder of zero. Well, then we're going to just go with Jurassic Park. You know, if we go with, uh, what, 16, which has a, you know, divisible by three, with which is a remainder of one, you know, we'll go with uh, the next Jurassic Park. We'll go with Jurassic Park 3. And if we land on something like, uh, what, 17 over here that has a remainder of two, then we'll get Dinosaur's Attack. So no matter what, we're we're guaranteed, we're guaranteed uh, some dinosaur cards. So let's see what ones we get. Feel free to guess along. Look at that's nice. It's not making that sound no more. Is it that nice? <laughs> All right, it is. I mean, come on, come on. Are you being for real right now? Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Eat your heart out, sheep. It's on your number. Normally, if we were uh, if we were spinning for regular cards, this would mean I get to pick whatever I want from the case. I can pick anything from one to twenty. But uh, in this case, since it landed on twenty-three, and we're doing this weird divide by three thing with the remainder of two, which means we're going to be opening up some dinosaurs attack cards. <laughs> this has bubble gum inside of it. Now I'm, we're, we're going to eat the gum. We're, we're going. We have to. We have to, right? Because if I don't eat the gum, you guys are going to call me a pussy. You're going to say I'm puss out. You're going to call me a cuck. And when they, then I'm not going to get no more bits. So I got to eat the gum. So that's just, you know, it's, it's just like, it's like Cabin in the Woods. You have to appease the gods that be. Otherwise, the big hand's going to come up out of the ground and just fucking smash you. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, like I said. These are from 1988. They're in a, a wax pack, is what it's is what this is officially called. Um, just wax paper, and the cards are printed on um, the same shit actually as the stupid thing from the click the click toy. It's basically gonna look exactly like that. Take a look at. Well, that's not a good sign. I read it. There's just a dude. That's just a fucking dude burning to death. That's that's what that is. Maybe there'll be some more dinosaurs on the other on the other cards. It'd be a... Oh, it says time to die on to oh, okay. <laughs> it's just like it, it, it just it just it seems like a meme made in 2018. It's like this this was 30 years ahead of its time. It's just a picture of a dude on fire. It says time to die. Like why? I, that's the, that should not that it should not be funny, but it it is, and I feel bad for laughing. So. Um, there's the, there's the gum, which has sp split as opposed to coming apart. Um, never a good sign. Uh, we have, I think we got this one in the past, the ultimate sacrifice, which is like, okay, this really has nothing to do with dinosaurs. I think it was just a bunch of cards of artwork of, of human, of human suffering. Hang on. Are we going to, there we go. This one really is not dinosaur centric. Like I said, I think this was just a set of artwork of just human suffering, and there were many dinosaurs in it. So whoever had access to this portfolio was like, um, "Yeah, we'll just sell that as dinosaurs attack because in most of these pictures, dinosaurs are are mauling humans." This dude is sitting on it. Like, let's just let's let's focus back in on this. This dude's sitting on a hand that's made of like faces. 
This is what the furniture in like Doom would look like. This is just a sticker. This is this is the least threatening thing here. It's just Stegosaurus. And for some reason, we cannot seem to st stop getting Stegosaurus things because when we opened up the chocolate stuff last week, we got um uh we got a Stegosaurus figurine last time. Oh hell yeah! Look at the fucking hell yeah! Look at this. Look at that. That's a dude. That's a dinosaur. That dinosaur is not just biting the neck of this lion it's just biting the fucking head just skull and all it's not it's not trying to crush the neck like which would be a more conventional way of hunting it's just biting through whatever it's the it's a fucking ronco knife thing <laughs> we, got, look, we gotta I, we, we can't go to the next car without appreciating this back here this is fucking pterodactyl or pteranodon this can't be it's killing Harambe. It keeps happening again. This can't be a pterodactyl, because we learned last week that the pterodactyl only had a wingspan of 10 inches. It can't be that one. What was the what was the duckbill dinosaur's name? Is it, uh... It's not Pachycephalosaurus, because that's the one that has the, 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 the head. So, the dinosaur is, is indirectly killing these people. Because, if you notice, the boat's being capsized, and the dude on the left just inexplicably has a gun... And in his panic, he has open fire and is just fucking annihilating the dude on the right. Like that's like there, there's like there's, there's there's like a fucking voiceover from Quake that's that's playing in this scene right now. Mr. Harley, I understand you witnessed the tragic accidental death of duck hunter Fred Stanton. Tell us in your own words what happened. Well, we was out fishing, my son Amos and me. Suddenly, we heard a splash and a gunshot appears. One feller shot the other feller square in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> the part that I'm supposed to focus on is not even the part that keeps making me laugh. Right, okay. Let's. This one's called Anchorman's Peril, right? So let's focus. There's like a big... It's like an Allosaurus coming in here. And it's like, this guy is like... Dinosaurs, I don't think they had forked tongues or whatever, but, you know, this dude is, like, freaking out. He's like, oh, no, it's gonna eat me. The reason that I keep laughing is this screaming black man down here is fucking this face of just total abject horror. Just... <laughs> I can't, can't keep looking in the monitor. It's just making me laugh every time. Well, I mean, what is it saying? Oh, this is actually a pretty th neat thing on the back. It just says, it says, please stand by in that, that Radio Shack futuristic font that was popular back then. Holy shit. What the fuck is... Okay, so we've gone on, we've gone like full on Pink Floyd music video now. This says like ripped, ripped out of time. And like the dinosaurs are literally like being like ripped backwards or something and the skull is like the skin is separated from the skull cleanly notice that all the innards from the skull are gone too like there's no brain matter there's nothing in there it's just all just kind of pulled straight out that's and then there's like one back up here that's just like the his, the head just came off that's like that's as far as that one got it's just just like but you know the, the uh, real star of the show down here is this is this titty lady who is somehow immune to the effects of the time vortex and her boobs are not being sucked off of her chest or whatever. <laughs> Helen completes the re reversal sequence and presses the... Helen? You mean Helen from... The guy that was... This says time to die? <laughs> so wait, these, these tell a story then. Okay, Helen presses the red trigger button. All over the world, the prehistoric invaders are ripped out of time but so suddenly and savagely that they are literally torn to shreds. I see their spectacular destruction on the Prometheus monitors, and then I see Helen, my beloved Helen, face stained with tears, knowing full well what she has sacrificed to save the human race. So that means go to card... Yeah, this is card 49. So card 50 is called Gruesome Fate, which, I mean, can we get a focus on that? Because this this little preview of what this card is appears to be a dinosaur whose head has blown up and turned into a tornado but apparently like apparently 
this is card 49. This is not the happy ending because card 52 is over here, and this is this guy is not doing. I mean, does, does this look like the face of a happy gentleman? This doesn't. I mean, objectively, objectively, he seems like he's not having he's not having fun. Like this dude is not at like Fiesta Texas or something, right? He's not on like a roller coaster. He's literally burning to death. I know the actual art is this the guy in the hand chair of faces. They didn't. Somehow that sentence made sense, but it, it sounded like it didn't. I, I think this is dumb as shit. So, Time to Die, the 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 B-side, is going to be what gets presented here. Then we've got the Animal Wars one, with all the zoo animals being eaten. We got the, the screaming black dude. We got the duck one, with the guy getting his... <laughs> it's got the reverse chest burster going on here. And then we got the dinosaur head getting... Booty had me like... You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And then we got the Stegosaurus sticker. So, you know, this sticker's cool, but this is really just... Oh, oh, shit! I was about to say this was a really out-of-place sticker compared with all the rest, but no, this is... It's... There's a dude that's pierced on the... Impaled on the tail down there. We get a... Yeah. This one's alright, but still no. Same with this one. This one wins because the dinosaur is cute, right? It's a cute dinosaur. But the real star of the show is the screaming black man. So that's, uh... <laughs> this one This one gets in. And then, of course, time to die. Just, just because this is, like, an absurdist meme from, like, 2017, 2018. It's from, like, modern era, but it was printed 30 years ago. But speaking of time to die... Speaking of time to die, I noticed uh, you guys maybe thought I forgot about the uh, the bubblegum situation here. It just so happens the gum broke, uh, the little piece broke off, the perfect little size. I'm not going to be like Ashen's, where he chews off one little piece of the corner and he's like, Oh no, that tastes awful. Oh, oh. I'm going to put this whole ass piece right here in my mouth. Spiky Floofy, thank you for the bits. Nice knowing me. <laughs> I'm not trying to like... Yeah, I'm not trying to shit on Ashens. I actually like him. I've followed him for like a decade, but uh, he's just the first person that pops in my mind when I think about people eating gross things on the internet for money. So here we go. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm I'm I'm, I'm putting it off. Right? Obviously, that's what I'm doing. So here we go. Oh no. Oh, it tastes like paint. Oh. Oh. <laughs> It just turned to powder. That's it. I don't even got. Oh, hey, I got. Okay, I got water. I. Oh. Oh, that's bad. It's not even gum. It just. It just. Literally, it's like those. It's like the. It's like that scene from Joe Dirt when they set off the atom bomb and the the, the Native American guy just like turns to soot and blows away. That's what happened in my mouth just now. Just... <laughs> Necros turns to dust in your mouth, not your hand. <laughs> it's good. Okay, well, we're not going to eat the rest of that.